some cupping. So what does the cupping do? It helps bring blood flow and circulation to the area. So we're, it's basically kind of a controlled micro trauma. So the little blood vessels in there, it kind of does break open some of the blood vessels, but that helps bring the healing factors into that area. So your muscle is getting repaired and uh, decreased in pain or has decreased pain because we're kind of, it's the same kind of concept as dry needling, but not at an intramuscular level. Does it feel okay? Feels weird. Yeah. <laughs> Recording it? Yes. You're my first patient. Yes, I'm the first, your first patient that gets to use your equipment. Yeah. Have you done this with Vicky before? Me? Yeah. Yeah, I remember that. There. This okay. is the first time I've ever had this done. You might get the bruises. Yeah, so I'm gonna have like little hickeys all over me? Yeah. It could. Sorry, I forgot to. <clears throat> what Vicki says that is, it's not bruises, it's the toxins coming out of your tissues. Toxins coming out of the tissues. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the darker they are, the more toxins your tissues have. Yeah. Ah. Fun fact. <laughs> yeah, fun fact, weird. Okay, now it's like... Hmm. Jane, you said you strained your ankle two weeks ago. Body. How much butt crack do you want? <laughs> and he was like, keep going down, keep going down. He was like, okay, you're going to find some butt crack down there. Okay, I'm not going to Okay, let's talk about what we want to work on. I really like to wear Mm -hmm. well, I was trying to find my other red shoes. Those other ones that you brought? Yeah, but... Now I look like an octopus attacked me. Mm -hmm. Looking a little rough. Looks super fancy. Looks like Michael Phelps, you know. No, these are mom's shoes. So when you push this, it releases it. Uh, you like pull it up. Oh, you pull it up. Uh, interesting. So that's supposed to bring more blood vessel, more blood there, and more healing. Okay. Targeted healing in an area similar to the drain. Hmm. Interesting. The, the skin level versus the intramuscular level. So oh, yeah, I gotta go needling. still, huh? Yep. Oh. <laughs> Where did it go? So while the video was gone, Mom got attacked by a giant octopus. How did that happen? I don't know. Well. My thumb and my, or my second finger and my pinky. And she said, this is a good technique. This, and twist it around, trying to do the, the eyes. I haven't been able to do this with this arm since I broke it. But look, I can do the eye on this side, and now I have to work for that on this side. I have to keep back, and bum, bum, bum. Da, da. almost, almost. Yeah, I can see but both that, of your eyes through there. That very much tires out my shoulder and my elbow, but here goes the eyes. Uh, uh. If I tip my head back, it works. Yay! It's an old librarian eyeglasses. Yeah, yeah. Because if I go down sideways, I can see it well. Okay, oh, that wore me off. Okay, that's enough. Those arms are hurting. <laughs> and here is Shane, who is done with his physical therapy for the day. So he gets to sit and play his games. No! Uh-oh. Ooh, look. Oh, we'll have to wait for that on a future video. And here is Rethan doing his physical therapy. The physical therapist is teaching him how to use the machines so he can continue doing strengthening when we're not here. So there's a lot of little nuances. So he is learning how to do this and use proper form, although he needs to remember to put that head back. How many have you done? Knees, shoulder width apart. Don't let the knees go in. I told you. 
pounds are good. One after the other, he's learning these techniques. Now work on the arms some. Drop those shoulders. Don't hunch over. There we go. Let's now he's got some good 15. form going on. Hold on, I was trying to measure these out. Do you want to have a different... The samurai. That's not how you do it. There. Better. Good job. I know this seems silly and you want to do the other way, but this is a very functional move. This is a good one for boom. Okay, first off, some of those things on the wall don't even match up. Look behind you, Mom. He goes, it's really heavy. I don't think I can do 10. I was like, all right, try for it. And then he goes way past it. Way past it. Overachiever. Overachiever. Right? I think so. Oh, it was just that. It's been a long time, but I am finally going to be showing my Mecca. I've got a lot of them. A lot. Yeah, a lot. Is there enough space for them on in the view? Mm -hmm. We're going to have to zoom in after. Can you see these over here? I don't think so. Darn. Also have some spaceships. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve mecha in two spaceships. Okay, we're okay. gonna have to do a and couple different videos probably. Two tiny trucks. Still, I gotta focus on it. Yep. They act, they actually have wheels and bumpers. And then cannons on top. These two are just the same thing, so I'm putting them to the side. Okay, what should the first one I look at be, Mom? Well, are you gonna do them all in one video or two videos? Two videos. Okay. So, so what should them. I look at first? Mm, I don't know. Come on. Melee. No, but which mecha? Point. Hmm. Let's start with the one in the middle. This was the first one I made out of all this stuff. Let me move these things away. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff. Okay, this was the first one I made after finding... Bricks and minifigs. It's an amazing Lego store. So, I, to make its arms, I used some T-joints and clips. It has, sorry, it has some, it has a good range of mobility in the arms. Although they do pop off pretty bad, quick. And it has a claw weapon. But its main feature... It has a claw weapon on it. This is like a stun claw. The stun claw can jab at a mech 
and cut it in half using plasma or stun it. And its main thing is wings, hidden wings. These wings normally just look like armor, but they allow it to fly. Okay, which one should be next? Which one should be next, Mom? This one is another... This one is one of the more recent ones. It's the largest mecha that I have. Mom, be careful, your knee is about to destroy. It's, it's the largest mecha that I've made currently, and it has a small hammer weapon. It's not, it doesn't have a faction that it's affiliated with, it just kind of wanders around. I don't really have a name for this one, although I sometimes call it the Wandering Titan. So it's got the hammer. That's to show it better. Its arms and legs are much longer than others. Than the other mecha's arms and legs. And the next one is one of my personal favorites. Overgrowth. It's a jungle mecha that was based in a jungle area. It was based in a jungle area. And... It wasn't used for a long time, so plants grew on it. These plants... The plants didn't alter its functions, but it's now good camouflage. It's kind of ironic, because its weapon is a machete. Okay, next one is the second most recent, actually third most recent, Silver Knight. The Silver Knight has an axe, although it isn't, doesn't look sharp because it's kind of hard to get a sharp looking Lego. The Silver Knight is an enemy to the ones that are red, to the red mecha, but there aren't, there's only one thing that's allied with the Silver Knight and that's the small trucks. Silver Knight has two missile launchers on its on the sides of its chest. You can see them there, the binocular pieces. And it's the second largest mecha. Next is another of my favorites, the Swordsman. The Swordsman has a large sword and a hunched over appearance. And if you look at its back, it has a cape. It's, it's one of my favorites just because of its appearance. Next is a spaceship. 